in the previous video, we've talked about what a stochastic process is. And then we've also seen that Markov chain is actually a stochastic process. So here, let's go into the detail of Markov chain. So Markov chain is part of the stochastic process. Because um, if we recall in the stochastic process, if you would like to predict the value of a random variable at p plus 1, you need to consider the value of that random variable at time t, t minus 1, and all the way to the beginning of the history of x, 0. So you need to consider all the history that has happened so far to predict x, t plus 1. The special thing about Markov chain is that it says or it models that to predict the value of x at time t plus 1, you only need to consider the information of x t. So just one time step before the one you're interested at. So you're interested at time t plus 1, you only need to consider the information from time t. Okay. So in the general stochastic process, you need to consider all the history from time 0 up to time t. In Markov chain, if you believe that the problem can be modeled as a Markov chain, you only need to consider the information from time t to predict what happens at time t plus 1. So just one time step before. So let's illustrate this with um, something more concrete. If we define x is the amount of money that you have, and then if you want to know the value at time t plus 1 equals to i t plus 1, so this is um, this part. So you want to know what is the probability that at time t plus 1, we have the money with the amount of i t plus 1 dollar. Obviously, it is related to the money that you have at time t, which is it. And then if you go all the way to the beginning of the history, you have uh, i0 money at the beginning. So if you look at this entire history, it means that you model this problem as a general stochastic process. However, if you believe that the amount of money that you have follows or can be modeled by a Markov chain, you only need to consider just one time step before. So you only need to know that the previous time you only have the money of IT dollar, and then you want to know what is the probability that at the next time step you have IT plus one dollars. So this is uh, to say that you model the problem as a Markov chain. You only look at one time step before. Now, if we say that uh, if we would like to define the probability that at time t you have i dollar, the probability that in the next time step you have j dollar, you can uh, write it down like this. Probability at time t plus 1 you have j dollar, given that at time t you have i dollar. You can write it down like that, but we can also simplify it as Pij. So Pij is the probability that in the previous time we have i dollar and then in the next time step we will have j dollar. So that is Pij and then we also call this a transition probability from state i to state j. From state having i dollars in your pocket to the state j dollars of money in your pocket in the next time step. So we are talking about just one step of time. Okay. Um, why is it so? Because remember Markov chain uh, says that to predict something at one time step, we only need the information from the previous step. If you look more closely the definition of the transition probability, it applies for all t. So the t here can be any number. t can be 0 such that xt plus 1 becomes 1. t can be let's say 7 such that xt plus 1 becomes 8. t can be 100, 
26 such that um, x t the t plus 1 becomes 127 so uh, this probability applies for any time so any time t and t plus 1 this probability of transitioning applies so that's why uh, there's uh, an assumption called stationary assumption which means that uh, whatever the time is whatever the time t is the probability of transitioning from i to j is always the same which is equal pij so whatever the time t is the probability of having i dollar at time t and then you will have j dollar at time t plus one it is always the same which is pij so that is why this assumption is called stationary assumption we usually collect all the probability transition probabilities that we have into a matrix so the row of the matrix shows the states um, at time t okay so this is your i here so this is your i and then the column means your j the state at the next time step so let's say um, p21 means that the probability at time t your state is two like you have two dollars in your pocket and then in the next time step you only have one dollar in your pocket so that's how to read p2 so let's say ps2 this means that at time t you have s dollar and then at the next time step you have two dollar uh, last example let's say p1s means that at time t you have one dollar in your pocket at time t plus one you have s dollar in your pocket okay so the sum of a row must equal one um, the logic is that because um, this is where you are now so this is your condition at this time so the sum of all the possible condition and the next time step obviously obviously must equal to one because uh, you have s dollar at this moment and then the sum of all the possibilities of the amount of money that you have in the next time step they must um, cover all the possibilities such the probability uh, must sum up to one right so uh, remember this is uh, something very important in your transition probability matrix the sum of probability of a row must equal to one again because uh, you have this much amount of money in this time i dollar and then the sum of all the possibilities of money that you have in the next time step the sum of the probabilities must equal to one because something out of all those possibilities must happen now let me ask you some questions to check your understanding as usual i will give you a pause in the video to give you the time to think about the question and then i will give you the answer after the pause so the first question if we believe that stock price may be modeled as a markov chain then to predict tomorrow's price we only need to know today's price and it doesn't matter whether the price has increased or decreased during each of the last 30 days we only need to know today's price is the statement true or false The answer is true. If you believe that stock price may be modeled as a Markov chain, then to predict tomorrow's price, you only need to know today's price. Now the second question. The transition probability has the stationary assumption, which means that Pij equals Pji. For example, the probability of transitioning from having $1 to $0 equals the probability from transitioning from one dollars to zero dollar in one time step is this statement true or false
The answer is false. The stationary assumption says that the probability of transitioning from i to j does not depend on time. So it doesn't matter whether t is 0, t is 7, t is 126, as I mentioned in the previous slides. It just uh, says that probability of transitioning from i to j is always the same amount. It does not mean at all that ij equals to ji. Okay, so that's the end of the video. And then in the next video, we will see some uh, examples where we are going to try to create the um, transition probability matrix. So see you in the next one.